How's it world? Welcome to our new series on Elwu. We're an exploring family living in South Africa. We're on a mission to explore the whole circumference of our country and learn as much as we can on the way. With our trusty bus Lucas, we're setting off on thousands of kilometers to reach our borders. In our first episode, we're kicking off our journey in the middle of our country from a city called Bloemfontein. Our first target, an historic mining town called Kimberley, with an amazing sight to see. Our first leg is quite short, only about 170 kilometers, which takes about an hour and 40 minutes to drive. The road during our journey was surprisingly well maintained and there were very few potholes on our route. Kimberley is the capital of the province called the Northern Cape province. In general, the Northern Cape is quite a dry place and I was looking forward later on to see some sand dunes when we drive through the more desert-like areas. Kimberley itself has a couple of interesting historic facts, one of which is that in 1882 it became the second city in the world to add electric streetlights. But most noteworthy is the fact that diamonds were discovered in 1866. And from there, massive diamond rushes changed the landscape forever. We came here to explore this big hole. Finding a parking spot to fit Lucas, and the trailer was quite easy this early in the morning. Walking into the Big Hole Museum, you are met with a really nice historic town. The old town has been reconstructed to show how people lived and worked in the 1800s in Kimberley. It felt like quite an industrious town, with much more colour than you'd expect. One only needs to imagine the rustling and bustling of the crowds moving around, horse-drawn carts, and later on, some of the first automobiles. Steam locomotives hissing all over. There must have been large numbers of miners constantly heading in and out of the hole towards the shops, homes and tents. Just imagine the dust that was kicked up on these gravel roads and the excitement if someone hit it big during their dig today. The detail of the reconstruction is just amazing. While window shopping in this old town, you'd see fully stocked shops with the latest wares from the 1880s that is. And it really gives you a glimpse of what you could spend your diamond fortune on. Musical instruments. Watches and clocks. A lot of ointments and medicines. And even some wooden furniture. Now, again, imagine you were fortunate enough to own a house in town. All of the finest furnishings for you. Just a place to relax after a long day managing your team back at the mine or brokering deals. You would also be some of the first in the country with electricity in your house. Back at work, you would meet in your company's boardroom. Or maybe you are the local dentist. All the tools of the trade laid out and ready to be used. I wonder what the dentist office sounded like back then. The medical doctor was probably a multi-role GP, surgeon and dive and retrieval specialist for getting back ingested diamonds. Back in those days, with no access to Amazon or eBay, most tools and machines had to be manufactured on site. There would have been a number of blacksmiths and workshops busy around the clock just to keep everything moving.
Having spent a lot of time exploring the old town, it was time for us to head out to the main event, the big hole. Now we would strongly recommend taking the full tour. It's not just seeing the big hole, but it's also guiding you through the history of it. Walking up the ramp towards the big hole, you can't but snigger at the signage. Danger open pit. And then, quite literally, the view takes your breath away. It's massive. Note the buildings in the background. One thing we've learned is that the mine was not just a big hole on top, but it actually mined into the ground for over a kilometer deep. The mining only stopped during the First World War in order to send the men into battle, after which the mine flooded and could not be mined anymore. The mining towers, still standing, leaves a testament of what happened here surviving wars and politics. Around the towers, some old vehicles, this close washing machine, some historic John Deere tractor, and even some steam rock crushers. Continuing with the tour, we went underground into a simulated mine. Imagine working between these walls, and I'm sure that in the real mine, it's much tighter. Coming out of the mine, we're back in the main museum. A lot of interesting displays, but the main event is walking through the vault looking at real diamonds. No cameras allowed though, so these are fakes, replicas of actual diamonds now sitting on royal crowns of old monarchies. Our time in Kimberley ran out and we had a long road ahead. So after taking a quick look at the old train, which used to run VIPs to and from Kimberley, we were back on the road. Cheers, Kimberly.